Hello, Chris here at ePianos, and today we've got the Yamaha DGX670 behind me, and this video is all about some important things you might want to know before you buy one. Um, we've got lots of playing videos on this model right now that you can see on ePianos TV, so do go and check those out as well. But this is just a few things that you might not have found in the manual or a few questions you might have floating over you before you buy one of these uh, Yamaha DGX 670s and that's what I want to show to you today. Um, first thing is, uh, the piano itself, if you come this way, is controlled um, not with a touch screen. We're all rather used to using touch screen things these days and uh, you might be surprised to know that this one is not controlled touch screen. You navigate your way around by using the arrows here and it doesn't take you long to get used to it. It's very thoughtfully designed and if I wanted to enter something I'll go in there and there's an exit button and a tab button across the top. It's all very intuitively done um, but beware it's not a touch screen. Um, the second thing is the wooden stand that you see the piano on at the moment it does not come with. In the box what you will get is just the piano itself. None of what you see underneath comes in the box. Um, the stand you're looking at here is called the Yamaha L300 and it is approximately an additional 100 pounds and the pedals down here, the three pedal unit, also does not come with the piano in the box. You will just get the piano itself, the music rest, the power adapter and a sustain pedal. The wooden stand itself, if you come and have a really close look at it, it is very, very sturdy. It has the advantage of not only looking very neat and tidy, but the piano itself is held on with screws and it's very sturdy. In fact, I'm going to give it quite a, quite a, a bash now and you can see that it takes quite a lot of effort to uh, make it wobble. So the most secure way you can have this piano is just by having it on its wooden stand called the L300. Now, the only downside really, apart from the extra cost of course, of this particular stand is it's not very portable. The piano itself is reasonably light and one person can carry it. But when you attach it to this stand, suddenly the whole thing becomes a little bit more of a pain to put in the car and move around if you need to. So what we recommend is an alternative called a double brace X stand, which is also much, much cheaper as well. It's only in the region of 30 pounds. And uh, the nice thing about the double X stands is they do fold up flat. The piano will sit on top of it under its own weight. And when you want to move it, you just lift the piano off, then get the stand folded up rather like you do with an ironing board. It can then be laid down in the back seat of a car, taken to a gig or moved upstairs or whatever you want to do with it. And uh, also, when you're using the double X stand, uh, it's well worth knowing that they d it does not obstruct your feet and you can comfortably get to the pedals underneath the piano if you need to while using the double braced X stand. Uh, now on the subject of uh, pedals and this three pedal unit down here, if you fancied using that, you do need, you are required to have the wooden stand itself because come this way and let me show you how it attaches on the back. Have a look down here. You can see that the three pedal unit um, is screwed in physically to the horizontal bar that makes up part of the L300 wooden stand. So if you wanted to have that three pedal unit you have to use the wooden stand as well. The piano does come with a sustain pedal and uh, it's a little bit different to this one. In fact, I've got it over here. This is the pedal that comes with the piano and it is a single sustain pedal. Plugs in the back and operates just as the right hand pedal does on this piano. The only trouble I've found is when I'm sitting and playing this, this pedal it does tend to move around a little bit when you're playing it just like this. It does have rubber on the bottom of it that stops it from moving around too much, but the three pedal unit is fixed very firm and does not go anywhere. But I found that while I can cope with this sort of pedal, I am really chasing it around with my foot a little bit, usually at inconvenient times during uh, live performances. 
question we get quite often is where can I put my sheet music and my music books and what have you on this piano and the good news is the piano is supplied with a music rest that you see here and it just slots into the top of the piano I can lift it out just like that and it's a very sturdy thing it doesn't weigh too much um, and you can play the piano without it as I quite often do because I'm a play by ear person but should you need it you can pick out the music rest that comes in the box, slot it in there and quite easily put your sheet music up on the uh, music rest just like that. Another really convenient thing is on the music rest you can easily put your iPad or your uh, iPhone to use with Yamaha's excellent Smart Pianist app that as of this moment uh, in the middle of May uh, 2021 is not compatible with DGX 670. I hope it will be in the future, but there are loads of third-party programs out there, as you know, for tablets and smartphones. Music Rest is a nice place to put those should you need to. Now going on to the weight of the piano and exactly how portable the DGX 670 is. Um, well, it only weighs 21.4 kilograms or 47 pounds, three ounces. So one able-bodied person should be able to move it quite quickly, particularly when it's not on its wooden stand because that does add a little bit of weight. Um, just a quick demonstration, one uh, average sized male, um, you can lift up one end like that. And if I really had to, I could pick the whole thing up and lift it like that. And you can judge by the groany noises that I'm making exactly how heavy it is. But as I said, without the wooden stand on there, it's actually very easy to pick it up and put it under your arm and move it around or put it in one of those great trolley cases that you can pick up one bit like an airport trolley and drag it around with. Now this piano has 88 keys, which is the standard amount of keys for a, a regular piano. Um, most ordinary upright acoustic pianos, grand pianos will have 88 keys on it and so does the DGX 670. Uh, what's more is that they are weighted in case you're wondering and that means that they feel like a traditional piano to play. There's a uh, actual hammer in here connected to every key and it's graded so as you go up the keys the keys actually get lighter just as they do on a real piano. But something that's worth noting here is, uh, and you might need to come very close to see this, look down the side of one of the keys here. And what do you notice? They are plastic keys. Okay, now this isn't the end of the world. They still feel like piano keys to play. But the reason that I'm pointing this out is because some models, for example, the Yamaha P515, um, do have wooden keys. The Yamaha CLP745 is a, another model that's uh, in a similar range to this. Wooden keys are what traditional pianos have, so they're, they are by definition more authentic. I prefer them to play. They do feel like um, closer to the real thing to me. Plastic keys still feel like piano keys, but they're just it's not quite the same as playing the real thing, real wooden keys. So it's important that you know that about the DGX 670. Now the models that I mentioned there that do have wooden keys, uh, you also need to know that the price is considerably more as well. A P515 I think is, is well over a thousand pounds and the CLP745 is a little bit higher than that because it comes in a proper piano cabinet as well. But considering the price of the DGX 670 and considering everything else, that you get in here, as you'll say, as you'll see in our playing demonstrations, the price is very good. It's very, very good value for money. Okay, this next point is about using headphones with the DGX 670. Uh, it's worth knowing that the socket on the back of the piano is a quarter inch jack for your headphones, but most headphones, or most that I've seen uh, recently, have on them this small jack like this. So beware, if this is what you've got on your current headphones, for example, your iPhone headphones, it's not gonna work. It will not plug in. The socket will be too big for it on the back of this piano. So you're going to need uh, one of these adapters. Uh, here at ePianos, this is the type of thing, being a piano and keyboard specialist, that we anticipate, and we make sure that you get one of these adapters when you buy headphones with us. So this will now plug into the back of the piano without any loss of signal, but just beware that the socket is a larger one in there for large jacks, not the small jacks like this. Incidentally, on the subject of headphones, 
Many people ask us about uh, possibly using wireless headphones, uh, Bluetooth headphones. Now, while there is Bluetooth capability on this piano, you can play audio from your smart device through the speakers of this piano via Bluetooth, uh, you cannot wear headphones with this. There's no um, system where you can play with wireless headphones and hear what you're playing. Generally, we'd advise against that anyway. The reason being is when you play the piano, um, the Bluetooth gives you a very slight delay, which is a real pain when it comes to keeping you in time. It's tempting to have wireless headphones, and if you've got a good set, it's tempting to use them with a piano, but we recommend always using wired headphones because the signal is instantaneous, there's no delay, and it will not put you off while you're playing. Now, if um, you're taking advantage of the great recording section on a DJX670, if you're a songwriter, a composer, and you're using the huge selection of voices and styles and the six track recorder on here, um, it's well worth knowing how you transfer it from the piano, your recording that is, from the piano onto a computer is very, very easy. You can do it as MIDI information. You can also do it as a WAV file, which means that when you transfer it into a computer, you'll hear precisely what you've played on the piano rather than the computer's native sounds. Um, and it's most easily done using a USB. Uh, and all you do is plug it in the front here, uh, just like that. That's a miracle, by the way, that I managed to plug that in first time. It's usually the third go that you get it right. Um, you plug your USB stick in there. You can send all of your recordings as MIDI or WAV to the USB. It only takes a few seconds. Take it out and put it into a computer. It is that easy to transfer recordings. You, don't, you can use an audio cable if you want to, but I find USB is the simplest way, which you can then transfer to a different instrument as well if you want to. Another question we get all the time is, can you record your voice when you're singing on this piano? And the answer is, no, you can't record it onto the piano but yes, you can record it directly to a USB. So if you wanted to record yourself playing this piano and singing at the same time, yes, you can do that. You'd need to have the USB stick in there, plug your microphone in, which would then allow you to sing through the speakers. While you're recording, you can direct it to save your recording directly to the USB stick. So yes, plug the USB stick in, sing, play, record as a WAV file onto USB. You can then take the whole thing, put it on a computer. But worth noting, you cannot mix the levels on the piano. So while you're singing, you better have a few practice runs beforehand to make sure that the levels are set so your voice isn't too quiet or too loud compared to the backing music because it will all go in as you play it. There's not an ability to mix the two as you go along. But yep, yeah, you can transfer your singing voice onto the piano's USB stick, then onto a computer. So I hope this has all been useful to you. If you have any more questions that we haven't covered here, then just leave them in the comments section below and we'll get straight back to you. Or of course you can email us or talk to us on our website live chat. Make sure you're signed up to our regular newsletters because we send out free tutorial videos and guides and what have you. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.